Reading Rocket. Disney Pixar Inside Out Two: The Junior Novelization, Chapter Fifteen. In headquarters, Sadness had heard Joy's voice coming through the walkie-talkie. She peered over the edge of the bucket. Anxiety was driving so hard on the console she didn't seem to notice. Sadness knew she needed to act now. She looked at embarrassment, silently pleading for him to lower the bucket. Embarrassment's tiny eyes darted from anxiety to sadness. He wrung his hands, unsure what to do. After a pause, the bucket started to move until sadness reached the floor. Then sadness signaled to embarrassment to lower the back of the mine tube. Meanwhile, anxiety remained at the console, trying to figure out her next move. Okay, I can work with this. I just need to recalibrate the console and make sure it's ready. Just no more surprises. Uh, okay. This one goes here. Check. That one goes there. Check. No, not exactly there. Here. Come on, turn it up a little bit. It's gotta be absolutely perfect. That one is definitely wrong, she muttered to herself. Embarrassment silently pulled down the back of the mine tube. Sadness sneaked toward the console, trying to stay out of anxiety's sight. She waited for the right moment when anxiety was distracted. Then Sadness reached out and pushed the recall button. In the back of the mind, the tube turned on. Anxiety sensed that something was off, and she caught Sadness with her hand on the button. Then, she turned around and saw that the back of the mine tube had been lowered. Anxiety picked up a pole and ripped the back of the mine tube from the ceiling. Sadness gasped. No! Please! All she could do was watch as the tube fell. It crumpled like it was made of sand, falling slowly toward the back of the mine, taking Sadness's last hope with it. Oh no! said fear and horror as he pointed toward headquarters. The emotions turned toward headquarters. They saw the back of the mine tube break free and collapse. A moment later, the last section of the tube crashed down in front of them. For a second, all they could do was stare. All their hopes for saving Riley had been pinned on that tube, the remnants of which were now lying at their feet. Joy cradled the sense of self in her hands. She could barely hear Riley's voice. I am a good person. The sense of self was dying. Joy stared at it in shock. What could she do? She had failed Riley. Maybe anxiety had been right all along. Joy started to walk. Joy? Joy! Where are you going? Disgust asked. But she did not receive a response. Joy found a space where she could be alone. She slumped to her knees. She looked at the memories surrounding her. Riley's tripping penalty in the championship game. Riley cheating on a test. So many of Riley's mistakes. All her flaws left out here to be forgotten. I don't know what to do, Joy said softly. She looked through the memories searching for an answer. When she didn't find one, she buried her head in her hands. Come on, please, what am I missing? Joy glanced at the fading sense of self. Joy had thought that she was helping Riley when she sent these memories to the back of the mind. Weren't mistakes something to avoid? But maybe this was why Riley had been acting so wrong. Breaking into Coach's office, insulting her friends. Riley knew better. She should know better. Discarding these memories may have been the wrong choice. Eventually, Joy turned to her friends. Joy, so what do we do? Disgust asked. I don't know, Joy admitted. The emotion stared at her, confused. Joy always knew what to do. I don't know how to stop anxiety. Maybe we can't. Maybe this is what happens when you grow up. You feel less joy. She explained, cradling the sense of self. But I do know this. Riley will never be herself if we don't get this back to headquarters. Fast. The emotions nodded. They were all in. But how? Disgust asked. Riley skated to the center of the ice, 
facing off with Grace for the puck drop. Have a good game, Riley, Grace said. You too, Riley replied. The whistle blew. For a second, the puck seemed to fall in slow motion. Then it hit the ice. The game was on. Riley and Grace's stick slapped at the puck, but Riley snatched it. She tore down the ice. Anxiety drove the console. Yes! Go, go, go! She cheered. Riley, I'm open! Pass it! Pass it! Danny called. With anxiety driving, Riley ignored Danny. She slipped by a defender and slapped the puck past Bree into the net. Score! The Firehawks cheered. Yeah, Michigan! shouted Valentina. Leave some for the rest of us, huh? said Danny as she skated past. In headquarters, an orange memory sphere rolled out. It showed the girls celebrating Riley's goal. The first goal light on Anxiety's tracker lit up. Yes, one down, two to go, Anxiety exclaimed, smiling. Everything was going according to her plan. In the back of the mind, Joy and the other emotions were standing at the edge of the canyon. They looked out at headquarters. Okay, so how do we get her sense of self from here to there? Asked Disgust. I have an idea, said Anger with a sigh. But I really don't like it. The others waited. Anger, Riley needs us, Joy said. Anger sighed heavily. <sighs> oh, pouchy, he called. Nothing happened. Anger turned to the other emotions. Well, what are you waiting for? Say the words. Oh, pouchy, the emotions hollered in unison. Their call echoed through Riley's mind. From out of nowhere, the neon green fanny pack flew in as if he'd been awaiting their call. Hi, everybody. I'm Pouchy, he shouted. Anger rolled his eyes. We know. Pouchy, we need to get this back to headquarters. Do you have anything that can help us? Joy asked. I have lots of items, Pouchy told them. Which one do you think will work best? A roll of tape? A rubber ducky? As he spoke, each item appeared in the air. No time, shouted Anger. He slammed Pouchy on the ground and reached in his zipper mouth. He pulled out dynamite, dynamite, and more dynamite. Dynamite? How will that help us? You don't have, like, a jetpack or a plane or something in there? Asked Disgust. What do you think? I have everything in here? Pouchy mumbled as he spit out Anger's arm. I offered you the rubber ducky. I offered you the tape. Joy looked at the dynamite and then glanced at the mountain of memory spheres. She got an idea. I know what to do, but we're going to need a lot more dynamite. Back on the ice, Danny had the puck. She was driving hard at the goal. Come on, Riley! Get the puck! Take it! Take it! Anxiety demanded. Riley saw her chance. She stole the puck from Danny. Michigan, what are you doing? Asked Danny. They were on the same team. Riley shoved Danny and tore down the ice, heading for the goal. Riley shot the puck, and Bree drove to block it. But the puck slipped past her glove and into the net. Yes! Riley cheered to herself. In headquarters, an orange memory sphere rolled out. It showed Riley making the second goal. The second light on Anxiety's tracker lit up. Okay, Danny might be a little mad at us, but they'll all forgive us when we make the team. Just one more goal, Riley. She turned back to the console. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe for regular uploads. If you have a favorite book you'd like read, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Until next time, friends!